the young guy mob, young guy shape came from is old rapper from the group, but he used to be named King. King to a God, no church in the wild. Basically like no church in the wild, basically. So it's a king to a God, young guy shit. Came down from that. Young guy mob after that. It could be used in multiple ways. I try to tell motherfuckers is it starts off as some arrogant shit. But really it's some like we in rap braggadocious, you know what I mean? What else can you say that's higher than God? You know what I mean? Flex on everybody as much as you want to. But what's higher than God? Nothing. It's basically some bragging shit. But after that, it's basically some self-confidence shit. You should believe that you are the only one who has your talents. And that's what that's what the foray and landscape of Young God Mob is. Because everybody's fucking different. Even if they're kind of similar. You still bring something different to the table. It's a whole bunch of fuck shit. It's just a whole bunch of bullshit. We can start making some bullshit. End up being soulful. Start making some soulful shit. End up being bullshit. By bullshit I mean a funny ass song. Or a soul. Like there is no route. We could either go extremely fucked up. Or extremely positive. Extremely ignorant. Extremely political. Extre like it's a whole bunch of extreme. Extremely soft. Extremely apathetic. At the end of the day. It's different. Everybody's got so many different sounds, and when they come together, it just just makes something beautiful. Since now I'm five, my baby been working. And I know the landlord fed up with So we pray to the gods, the jobs, and to keep us safe and watch. Alright, so 9 5 started one weekend when I jumped through this nigga window. So I jumped through this nigga window, it was like you're rapping today. And that's basically what, the, what started with the group. Yeah, I was just uh, uh, an engineer. And then I'm just like, okay. And then that's when we made the first, what, project, which was the 9-5 mixtape. Yeah. Niggas, niggas, niggas. Still be repping FSU like you didn't know. We stacking up the flow, but really be wanting mo. Mikey be smoking dro. And we shot the cover over at our home girl's place. Uh, uh, over, yeah, over on the Mackin Center. Um, uh, in her fucking mom's uh, living room. Apartment. Yeah, living room apartment and shit. Halloween. <laughs> when I started making music, I think I was in like, well, writing music, I was in middle school. Making music, early high school. Then I just kept on, kept on going. Found more ways to make music. Found more ways to do different shit. Mm. And then all my friend, every single friend I ended up having, ended up making music too. So that was, that was convenient. Yeah, Lil Wayne. Yeah. Was Eminem. Motherfucking Andre 3000, Missy Elliott, Buster Rhymes. I'm I'm a I'm a motherfucking fan of rap. No bullshit. Nah, like no bullshit. A super duper fan of rap. It's like everything, really. I basically started. I was into a lot of electronic music, like Daft Punk and shit. Um, and that's kind of what I was starting out as an engineer, just making somewhat of EDM beats and shit. But then I started getting into, of course, hip hop and shit. And then I started fucking poetry. I feel like I swear damn near almost everyone starts their shit. When high school started, that's when me and Willie started kicking it more. Basically got into more hip hop and shit. Being his uh, engineer a bit, and then him saying that he wants to start a rap group. He was just looking for someone to write, ghostwrite for. And then so, he chose me, and then he gave me like one of his tracks to kind of like finish. He, he wrote it, some of them he fully wrote it, and then gave it to me, and then some he wrote half and he told me to finish it, which is a really good way to fucking actually start someone off mm -hmm. of doing that shit. Oh, how I started off with two members, we wasn't even a group technically, because he was just the engineer, then I made him rap, and then we got kicked out of our old group, and then we started 9-5. Gun bars. I ain't mean to act hard, but it's that hard. I ain't mean to go hard in your front yard. I ain't mean to pull card, but it's that hard. Where the name come from? Oh, it comes from the zip code. Yeah, nine five eight two three or two 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 and nine nine five eight two three two two. Basically, adjacent and surrounding areas. Like if you live in this shit, yeah, it's nine five eight, etc. etc. But yeah, nine five. Also, it just means that we're putting in a lot of work going forward. This is our 9-5 music. Yeah. Overall, brought in members of Young Got Mob came along from us doing like a whole bunch of shows. Like the beginning of 
like the summer of 2016, I think. Yeah. So the summer of 2016 was just doing a whole bunch of shows, house shows, meeting people, venues, and things like that. So most of the brought in members of Young God Mob came from us just going out there and just being at shows with dope motherfuckers. XCVI was already there. Yeah. He just didn't rap. But when he did start rapping, he picked up it really Pretty fast. fast. Yeah. yeah. But, but yeah. um, yeah, so we knew Jorian from, uh, cause he went to some high school in Elk Grove. We saw him all the time at fucking CRC and shit. And, and we're like, oh, and then we went to, uh, we never to talked to him when we first yeah. seen him. Yeah. All right, so pretty much, um, that happened in 2014. I had just left Franklin. I was the one there for my freshman year to senior year. And then like my first two weeks of my senior year, I ended up going to a school called Rio Casadero, that's out in South Sacramento. Now, pretty much, I came back out here, and you know, I was with my shit. Like, I was starting to like really be serious about my craft, and um, I went to school, middle school, with Godfrey and um, Free Willy, and I ended up just you know rekindling like an old flame with you guys, even though we like we barely we like talked in middle school. We never really kicked it type shit, you know what I mean? Uh, I'm born and raised. In South Sac, most of my life, um, I rap, produce, somewhat draw right now, you know. Technically starts late 2008, early 2009. I go to a poetry slam, because I was like hella into poetry in middle school, and that kind of helped me like find a foundation, what I wanted to do, because like I always was into poetry and stuff, and I always was writing. Like when I got into high school, I was freestyling, you know, rapping with people and everything, and then probably like my junior, senior year, so 20, this is going 20, 12, 2013, my junior year, I started getting a little bit more serious. And then 2014, I actually dropped my first recorded um, track. 2014 is technically when my music career started, but on like, on the internet. But for the most part, I was, you know, always doing that shit. Some people who know me closely, they call me Jorian. That is my government name, but my artist name, I go by I have a few aliases, but my main, main, main artist name is XCVI, but then I have a 96, that's one alias. Big by X, that's another alias. We were just rapping, and not a lot of our beats were made by us. If they were, if they weren't that good. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean, as far as any group goes. Cause by that time we had Jorian in the group. What's up with y'all, man? So I'm gonna break it down on how I brought a few motherfuckers to the, the YGM and the 9-5 Collective. Um, the first person I actually brought was our homie Mello. Um, me and him, you know, we would kick it a lot in high school. And then when we, when I got involved with uh, FSU, he kind of was, you know, still around with the music shit, but he wasn't really doing music. He'd be at the studio sessions with us and whatnot, you know, chilling. And then he told us out of the blue randomly, he was like, oh yeah, I make beats, you know. But within that time, before he told us, you know, he's been on a few featured tracks. So turn another page and read about how I tear him up, equip with a machete in my hand is very steady. I think his beats no, crazy. Yeah, yeah, his beats are always wild. Always, his his always beats fucking. are wild. He shouldn't be able to make what he makes with what he has. Yeah. Because I'm like, this nigga uh, uses yeah. the phone kit. Really? Yeah. This nigga will use the phone kit. It will go stupid. And then it'll be like the most... The best thing you've ever heard. I'm like, he yo, made, this I, is a base. No, no, you some base level FL shit, uh -huh. and it will end up sounding the craziest you've ever heard. And this nigga is still on 12, I think. Yeah. We could we could make something, but we wasn't making the level of beats to what we would rap on. You know what I mean? We were better rappers than we were producers. So we basically linked up with some motherfuckers whose whole thing was this beat. And it had to be good, and they and they were good. And it was that was Claire and Rhythm Ramirez. Yeah. Um, and we met them basically what in high school. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I met Claire first. Glare had kind of been around for the music stuff for quite some time. He actually was like one of the first producers I actually worked with, but he didn't become a part of uh, Young God Mob until later. Glare has always been around for the start of things, but he kind of was taking a hiatus and producing to make sure he could bring it for just more than one person, you know? And then, motherfucker, I was like, oh, that's dope. You know a producer? I hit him up, he sent me some shit. Instant connection, nigga, he was on from there. Met. I met Joey. I work with Willie for 
years since senior year. So it's been, I can't even tell you how many years it's been, but we've been always working together, kept in touch after high school and everything like that. Senior year at Rio Casadero High School, I met up with Willie and I made friends with him because I heard you 9 5 talking about music and stuff. And I make music, so I kind of like got into the conversation. I was like, you look. I was listening to music, like, hey, I make beats. I was like, you ever made any hip hop? He's like, I don't, even, I don't even fucking with the EDM and shit. I'm like, you should try to make a beat. And then it's not that much of an overall transfer because trap is like basically the same drums. Mm -hmm. so. And that's where I started getting into like beats big time when I started with Night Five. <laughs> I'm from South Sac, that's where I used to live, in between the border of Elk Grove and Sacramento, so kind of by CRC. I started making beats with like EDM stuff, like that's when I first started, it wasn't very good, but eventually I started getting into sampling and hip hop because I used to be boy, and I started doing that a little bit with my music. And then, um, ha, Bari, he hates that verse. Uh, Bari was brought in by uh, XCVI. I even get at the motherfucking vape shop. This was actually a random encounter. Me and Bari, we got to know each other at Vape Box. This was probably like 2016, 2017. We were just talking about rap stuff at Vape Box and stuff, and uh, he started rapping. And then every other day, you know, he would just be freestyling and rapping and stuff. And then he found out that I made music. And then he showed me a song that he made. Sure enough, made a song with Cam. And I was like, wait, that guy, I kind of know that guy type deal. So. It, it, it was kind of like, we already kind of intermeshed in a way. I pulled up to uh, Free Will House out in South Sac. I think it was like, it was during the week or some shit. It was cool, you know, like, it wasn't no exam, but a little test, my nigga. They wanted to see like, like how well can you write, what type of music you make, you know, where you from. Pulled up to Free Will House, and he, uh, I think uh, Free Godfrey were there, and an ex was there. And they was just like spit something, write something real quick, and that's what that's what happened. They started fucking with me. I went to my first show because of them. I wore this little janky ass all white, you know, outfit. I had these little little fake white joggers on or whatever. They weren't fake, but they was these little goofy leather joggers. I had the red fucking puff polo and shit. I was on. It was cool. It was my first show. All right, so Maury always been rapping. Twenty two like, big guns. Yeah, motherfuckers didn't. Motherfuckers didn't know how much talent this nigga had because he would be around motherfuckers rapping and you know, already can rap. Cause like, all right, That's for sure. if you're in the studio and y'all working on your music, he never got a chance to hop on a song, this, that, and the third. Yeah. His whole thing was like, but I can rap. So we did a song like, oh fuck, you can rap. But he never really like- Put anything in wax. Yeah. yeah. When he did, I was like, all right, that's some potential there. We made a couple more songs or like, fuck, you might as well be with us. I used to make music with my big cousin Ronald before he died, God rest his soul. Um, I had been freestyling before high school. He used to set up some beats and have me, you know, just whatever he put on, he used to just have me flow. And I I started out young, I stopped for a long time. You know, I used to sit and freestyle in class. I just didn't, I didn't really care about making music for a while. It was just something I did with my cousin. And when he passed, I didn't touch music for a long time until I was like, what, I think I met YGN when I was like 18, 19 maybe. So I say from 18 to now, I'm 25. I've been making music a little over, you know, three, four years now. I was born in downtown Sacramento, lived in Orangeville for a minute, <laughs> uh, lived down in the East for a while. Well, Rancho Cordova, honestly. Like, everybody calls it the East. I'm gonna say it's Rancho. I lived down in Rancho for a minute, moved up to Elk Grove and then South Sac. Was out there for the last couple of years. I wanna say from like 18, to 20, 21, 22, 23, something like that. I actually moved out of state and came back recently. But, I, you know, I've been all over, up and down California, Sacramento and stuff, the area. You know, it's home. That's all I know. And then, let's talk about Jig. You I, met Jig. I met Jig in, from, a, in a nerdiest way. I moved to uh, North Highlands, and then I worked at Food Max on Wad Ave, uh, and then that's when I met a friend, uh, Ryan. I lived in these apartments in Antelope, and uh, I met a guy named Ryan, you know, we smoked weed, we fucking uh, kicked out the comic shop, and uh, he worked at Food Source, Food Max, and he knew young Godfrey, and Ryan knew that I rapped, and he knew that Godfrey rapped, and he introduced me to him. And then that's when basically we made the first track, I made the first track with Jig as 9-5, was, now that's fancy, 
Let's pet. That they still know that I go. Even though Jiggy shit be sounding shitty, my people know I do this for the city. Highlands, we vibe and you know it. And then after uh, the rest of 9 5 listened to uh, Jig's verse, they were like, okay. And then now, and then they wanted to meet him, so then I set that up. And then first impression, everyone liked him. I first started rapping was in middle school. It's a little embarrassing to say, but, um, you know, my friends and I were obsessed with, like, some Illuminati conspiracies, and, you know, hip-hop was involved in those conspiracies of, like, Prodigy. I mean, Michael Jackson's not hip-hop, but he was involved in that, so that's kind of how we got into rap, and I had basically kept rapping from 7th grade to high school. This nigga, this nigga nerdy. Smokes cigarettes and drinks a lot of alcohol. Yeah. Eckin' freestyle for two hours. So straight. basically, he so, was good for 9-5. Not just bullshit freestyle, like freestyle like and crazy. actually say something. I'm Jay. I'm from uh, Sacramento. You know what I'm saying? North side. I go by Jig now, which are my initials. Jose Ignacio Garcia. But the first rap name I definitely had was Six Sense when I was rapping with my friend uh, Dejan who went by Revelation at the time. Um, and he called me Sixth Sense just because he liked the way I freestyled and thought like, oh, that was his Sixth Sense, like, you know, that he could just freestyle and go off and shit and blah, blah, blah. My history of journalism, I think, is kind of random. I remember when I first went to community college, I wanted to be like a psychology major. For whatever reason, I don't fucking know. Why I change it to journalism, I don't even fucking know. But. Even though, like, taking journalism classes was kind of bullshit, like, they say all this shit, like, oh, it's about pursuing the truth, blah, blah, blah. But when they have a, an angle they want to spin, it's all about pushing that. When you look at a lot of rap, like Immortal Technique, Prodigy from Mob Deep, they said a lot of shit about the Illuminati, or you could take Tupac, for example, he said a lot of shit about the Illuminati or the establishment or whatever you want to call it. So, in my opinion, when you look at a lot of hip-hop, that goes hand in hand. I don't know, maybe it inspired me a little bit. I'm not sure. It was definitely something I learned a lot about. And other ladies when I drive right by in the whip and when they look at me they know that I'm FLY. If you're acting like a blade, hit the door, bitch, bye. Lord, give me a sign. I'm going out of my mind. I don't know what to do. I'm turning life to crime. Just to see that dime. Gotta take with mine. Do what I gotta do to shine. Stab a nigga in the ear with a chopstick. I'm not even in LA. And I'm not a cop, faded at my spot Swigging the bottle constantly cause I'm not able to take no shots Activator gag reflex, dodge with the reflex You dogs know I'm cat-like, I build up mad hype Pause for a minute to build up the comprehension You niggas ain't in detention, I lock you behind my bars This is prison, and I know you ain't escaping Let me end it here before I lose my concentration Cause when people get me worked up, I just be talking shit too much I'm angry and don't get two fucks below me you